Hey, uh, greetings, everybody. I'm Larry Williams, the director of Karma, the Consortium for the Advancement of Research Methods and Analysis. And it's my pleasure to welcome you to what we now are referring to as our Karma Quick Chat, where we take the opportunity to have a, a short conversation with one of our upcoming webcast presenters, learn a little bit about what's going on with them and get a preview of their talk that they'll be giving. Today, it is an absolute pleasure to be with my longtime friend and karma collaborator, uh, Professor James LeBreton, who's on the faculty at Pennsylvania State University. James uh, has given several webcast lectures, has been teaching short courses for a long time, and also participated in several of the different types of panel events that we've got going on. So, uh, James, it's great to see you again, and uh, we appreciate you giving your talk in a couple of weeks. And um, that is three weeks from tomorrow. And on Friday, September the 15th, and it is at 12 noon Eastern time. So James, you know, if you're like me, you've been doing this for a while. Early in the summer, the dread starts picking up about the upcoming semester. And then it kind of gets near and you get into it and it's not so bad. So what are you looking forward to about uh, the upcoming year? Anything special going on that you're, makes you a little bit more excited than you otherwise might be? Sure. So um, good question. I had to think about it a little bit because there's kind of things going on personal life and, and work life. And I'm excited about both. Um, so tomorrow I take my oldest daughter off to college. And I don't know if I'm excited about that or if I'm dreading that. I think a little bit of both. Absolutely. Um, but it's exciting to kind of watch her start that next chapter. And it's as someone who works in a university setting, I'm starting to look at all of the the young people around me a little bit differently because yeah. now they're, they're the same age. My daughter's the same age as, as many of them. Um, and then my oldest is, or that's my oldest. My youngest is going to be starting her junior year of high school. And she's a thespian, a singer and an actress. And so... She's going to be a lot more involved in the productions and shows this year. So looking forward to that, um, getting to watch her grow and develop as a student and, and as a performer. And then I'm not a huge travel fan. Um, my wife is a huge travel fan. I love my wife, so I travel. Um, <laughs> uh, so we've got um, some personal trips and then some work trips um, planned as well. So we're going to head to West Point to see some friends probably sometime in October and catch a football game. And um, going to University of Alabama, I'll be giving a talk down there and a chance to connect with some friends in the management department. And then she and I will be headed to Belize in December. And I've never been there before. And so we're very excited about that. So kind of Watched family stuff and a little bit of work intermixed there for good measure, but um, I think it's going to be an exciting 2024, 2025 academic year for me. Yeah, yeah. well, that's great. Um, so, you know, uh, many of our people know that the Academy of Management meeting was just held, and one of the uh, exciting events there was you receiving the Research Methods Division Distinguished Career Award. Uh, so that must have been uh, uh, an impactful uh, opportunity and experience for you. Can you share a little bit about what that was like and you reflect back now and what you remember about it? Yeah, um, it was really awesome. <laughs> um, I uh, I got the email a, a few, you know, a month or so before the actual conference. And so... Um, when I knew that I was going to be getting the award, I asked my uh, wife and daughters to come with me. Um, yeah. My my kids um, don't really know what I do. I'm not sure that coming to watch that ceremony gave them much more of an insight. But um, I joked at the time that, you know, they knew their dad was a big nerd, but now they know I'm an award winning nerd. Um, and yeah, so they may not know any more about what you do, but they certainly should know how well you do it now. Right. Sure. Yeah. Um, and so it was it was nice. Um, the Academy is a very large organization, as we all know, and um, there's lots of different divisions. Um, and for many people, the Research Methods Division is kind of a secondary division. And, and for me, it's a primary. I mean, that's kind of where I see my home. Um, my identity is is um, largely wed to the research methods division. And so 
you know, to get that kind of recognition from your peers really meant everything. Um, and it, you know, it was a chance for me to reflect on kind of my career up to this point, um, people I've had a chance to learn from and work with. And so, um, you know, Larry James was my, my mentor in graduate school. Um, but then, you know, I had many informal mentors. And I think what's nice about the research methods division is it's just a very welcoming division. And I think there's a lot of really supportive people there. Um, and it's nice to have that kind of cohesive group of people. And if you don't know someone, you can walk up to them and chat with them and they'll be happy to chat with you and, and hear what you're working on. So it was really, it was really nice um, to get that division, um, my home division to get that kind of recognition. Yeah. Well, uh, it was much deserved. Congratulations again. And I'm sure that you will use that as a, sort of a springboard motivation vision for all the great things that you'll continue to do in the future. So one of the reasons uh, you do work, great work in several areas, um, but probably most people know you for your work in multi-level uh, analysis and issues. Where did that interest come from? Um, so I would say the origin of that really wasn't multi-level. I think I originally, my, my very first kind of pathway towards multi-level was I had an interest in learning about inter-rater similarity. So mm -hmm. rater reliability and rater agreement. And um, one of the first papers I worked on was looking at kind of the similarity agreement reliability um, that you have with multi-source ratings, 360 degree, you know, kind of feed, multi-source feedback readings. Um, and I was working with Larry James in graduate school, and he is um, a well-known methodologist who had developed and um, refined a family of statistics called RWG. And those statistics played a very prominent role in kind of the first article I was working on. And then as I learned more about those, I became more interested in um, kind of the role that those statistics play in uh, aggregating data. Um, and so my one of the first multi-level papers, one of the first papers I did that was kind of more multi-level focus was with um, uh, Janelle Center, um, who is now Janelle Whitmer. Uh, and it was a paper where we kind of reviewed um, all the different issues, not all, but a lot of different issues around using um, agreement and reliability statistics in mm -hmm. data aggregation. And that led to working on a paper with um, another really talented student, Dina Krasikova, um, she had an interest in dyadic analyses and kind of leader member exchange relationships. And so we had a chance to work on a paper there. And then I worked on a, a APA handbook for multi-level theory measurement analysis and had a chance to do that with Stephen Humphrey. And then most recently, the um, paper I'll be talking about in a few weeks um, was kind of like a 15-year update um, to the paper I originally did back with Janelle Center, now Janelle Whitmer. Um, and so it's kind of started with agreement reliability and just that general interest and then kind of looking to see how those statistics can be used to help with decisions around aggregating data, which is plays a prominent role in multi-level. Um, and that just kind of led to a more general interest in multi-level. Yeah. Well, we, we, CARM has certainly been the benefactor of that interest and uh, we're grateful. Your short course has always been one of the most popular short courses uh, we now have a three core sequence uh, related to multi-level analysis. And so um, we're, we're exi excited for all that you do for Karma. So you, you mentioned your webcast that's coming up. Again, that's in three weeks on uh, September the 15th. Can you give us like a quick preview of it? Yeah, so um, this is, the, so the, the webcast is um, based upon a paper that um, I published earlier this year. And um, collaborated on that paper with one of my current super talented students, Amanda Muller, and with a former um, uh, super talented student, Janelle um, Whitmer, who was previously Janelle Center. And um, uh, Stephen Rogelberg um, had and I had been in conversations around uh, different kind of methods, topics that I was thinking about, and and he really encouraged me to write a paper that would be kind of a 
follow-up to the 2008 article um, that Janelle and I had written. And so as, we, as I was thinking about like, well, what would that look like? And what would be the, the themes that, you know, what are the unresolved issues or the themes that need to be addressed? One of the things that really stood out to me, um, you know, having some, um, you know, fluency with multi-level, I oftentimes will be asked to review articles for, for journals. And as I was reflecting on that, you know, a lot of the information that um, you would really need to know exactly what authors were doing um, was kind of glossed over, or it might be omitted, or it might be mentioned, but it wasn't really clear. And so the paper that uh, Amanda and Janelle and I wrote was really, we kind of did a very cursory review of um, recently published articles that used the RWG statistic or some variant to justify data aggregation. Um, and so oftentimes when we go to aggregate data, we want to make sure that, you know, the within the groups, people are on the same page. So if I say there's a climate, I want to know that the people in that team or that organization generally see the world the same way. And then if they do, we can say there's a climate in the group. And as we were, were talking about the paper, we realized that there's a lot of steps. There's a lot of kind of subjective decisions along the way mm -hmm. that need to be made, um, but they're not always made explicit or clear. And so what we tried to do was review the existing literature, see how people are using the statistics, what information they're sharing and disclosing, and what information would someone really need in order to, to reproduce the, the results that were, were in that article. And so what we came up with was a set of guidelines for um, kind of improving the transparency, the clarity, and the reproducibility of research um, that uses these kind of aggregation statistics like RWG. And so that's what I'll be talking about, talking about kind of what are some of the recommendations and suggestions for um, what information would be most useful for the audience, you know, your, your audience of your article to know, um, know about what should you include in, in your descriptions. Yeah, well, given uh, uh, the frequency of those types of designs in organizational research, um, we'll be delighted to have uh, a talk that's so practically oriented that can really help uh, uh, improve our science in that to regard. So, and again, that is Friday, September the 15th at 12 noon Eastern time. Uh, live access to that is available to uh, those at Karma Institutional Member Schools. Our registration for those programs is open. You can find more information uh, karma at TTU, Texas Tech University, Google Karma, and you'll get to our spot. So, uh, James, it's great catching up with you again, and uh, I will look forward to seeing you in three weeks for your webcast. Good Sounds luck. Good. Good Thanks, luck. Thank you.